Although Kenya has recently banned plastic bags, it will take time before they disappear from the roadside. I'm sure this is also a problem in Nigeria too. Definitely, Sharon. But did you know that you can make something useful out of them? An initiative here in the northwestern part of Nigeria collects the bags, recycles them, and turns them into great handbags. Now, see how these women are doing their bit for the environment. Want to know how to turn waste into wealth? In Nigeria, waste management is poor, so littering is a major problem. But when plastic waste doesn't break down, it creates serious threats to both health and the environment. An initiative, From Waste to Wealth, decided to do something about the problem. The women involved collect discarded plastic bags, then clean and dry them. After that, the bags are cut into strips and knitted into accessories, such as handbags, mats, and even laptop bags. The initiative helps women learn new skills, provides them with an additional source of income, and makes the environment just a little bit cleaner. Do you like that? If you are also doing your bit, tell us about it. Visit our website or send us a tweet. Hashtag doing your bit. We share your stories. For the next story, I wish I was actually standing beside or on top of the lake. But hey, I am not standing near any water body to tell you about Lake Malawi, which is one of the largest lakes in Africa. It is also one of the most biodiverse on the continent. Several hundred species of fish live in the lake, which only exists there. But the population around the lake has steadily grown and these residents live off its fish. Now there is too much of fishing and often the wrong kind of nets are used even near the national park on the southern edge of the lake. The park is also a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site but may lose its status because of its illegal fishing and pollution. Fortunately, the people around the park have woken up. They have now set up a protected area for fish. Trips like these are rare because fuel is expensive. This fishing committee is from the small village of Chimpamba in the south of Lake Malawi. They control a protected area where fishing is prohibited. The committee set up the zone themselves to protect their only source of income, the fish. Fish numbers are declining and people are seeing their livelihoods slip away. Because wherever they are allowed to fish, people are going to extreme lengths to get anything they can. Bernard Goulot is a chairman on the committee. This is a very good example. This is a mosquito net. We are not allowing any fisherman to use this type of net because, as you can see, the size of a mesh, even the egg of a fish cannot pass through. So if we can allow them to use this type of a net along the shore, they can scoop all the babies, so we will not have the any fish for using in the future. Protecting the zone is no easy feat. It lies between two villages that are expanding, so food demand is also growing. Even children have to go out and provide for the family. This is chambo. The chambo, a type of perch, is the most important species to these fishermen. The chumbo that the children caught are very small. They didn't use forbidden methods, but they're harming the lake all the same, because these fish could have spawned if they'd grown up, and then there would have been more chumbo. Lake Malawi has a rich biodiversity. Around 700 species of fish are found only here and just around half of them have ever been scientifically recorded. Around the shore, you mostly find imbuna, a native species of cichlid that are sold around the world for aquariums. 
The village of Chimpamba is in the middle of Lake Malawi National Park. It shouldn't look like this, but where can they go when there are so few fish left elsewhere? There are around 18,000 people living in the national park, almost 10 times the number 25 years ago. Fish is a staple here, and many people can barely afford it anymore. The price is double than before. As you can see, we walk around to find the place where they are selling some fish like this. It's only this, the home sucker, because the catchment now is very low. Garbage is also a big problem here. There isn't a functional disposal system. Almost everything ends up in the water. But things are changing. Local communities have joined forces with the managers of a guest lodge in the nearby town of Cape McClear to clean the place up. The Malawi military even sent a diving unit to help. The soldiers mainly collect plastic trash. It's everywhere, water and land. So it's dangerous for humans as well as fish. Cans, ripped up nets, old pipes, broken dishes. There's all manner of garbage at the bottom of the lake. Have fun. Enjoy. Kenneth McKay is the founder of Malawian environment organization HEED. Lake Malawi National Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it has been threatened with being delisted because. Uh, the feeling was that perhaps it wasn't being cared for as it should. The people are out today, National Parks is here, Department of Culture, and all the Malawians are showing how important this is to them, to keep it clean, to keep it managed, to stop any overfishing. After just a few hours, a pile of garbage is collected from the beach and the water. It will now be disposed of responsibly. In the evening, the fishing fleet of Chimpamba heads back out onto the lake. They'll be out there all night, hoping for a good haul. But there are just too many fishermen and not enough fish. Their hope continues to dwindle, along with the unique diversity of Lake Malawi. <laughs>